Howdy, 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 folks. It's your boy Hefetangs back with another video for you guys. And today we are going to be having the first video in a new series of key map positions. So, when I'm telling you guys these positions, they may not work 100% of the time, but they are very strong positions and positions that I like to put myself into. And once you have a good starting position, it allows you to get early damage, it allows you to get early spots, and if you can get into this location and make it work, you guys are going to be having a lot better games, trust me. So, you find yourself on Redshire, let's say this, okay? You need, in order to get to this position and make it work, you need a tank that has some decent speed. The 260 has decent speed, it can get up to 50 kilometers an hour. That is the pretty much what you want to have if you want to get into this spot. You can be in a medium, you can be in a heavy, you can be in a tank destroyer. As long as it has the speed to make it into this position. Because if you don't have enough speed, you're going to get tore up trying to get into this location. Now, another thing, before you just hop straight into this location, you need to make sure that you have backup. As strong as this location is, it will not help you if the entire enemy team pushes you and you have no one to back you up. You need to have make sure that there are teammates coming over here. So, first thing you want to do, you see me exactly just straight on beeline it. And you see what I'm talking about, the speed right here, because if you are slow and their machine, say the machine was, you know, paid more attention to me, I could have taken a lot more hit than just one right there. But I didn't. One, I was a little lucky, but two is because I was quick. Now that I'm in this location, you can see exactly all the stuff that you can see from this spot. Usually, if you weren't up here, the enemy teams would be able to go all the way up where that T-57 was, and they would have so much more mobility on their side of the map. You are denying the entire team the, a good portion of their side of the battlefield right there, and that is why this position is so key. Do you need armor go into this position? I guess no, but if you have some, like the 260, you're hold down right here. These rocks are covering my lower plate. All they see is maybe a little bit of my upper plate and my turret. You are pretty much invincible in this location if you have a strong upper plate and a strong turret. So is it better to come up here with an armor tank? Yes. Can you make it work with a medium? Also yes. One thing that this position you need to watch out for is artillery. You are an easy, 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 easy target for artillery. I get incredibly lucky this game, and Artie does not focus on me once this entire game, which blows my mind, okay? But if you do see multiple Arties on the enemy team, you may not want to go to this position, all right? So once you're in this position, my team has already been able to take a lot more of this left-hand side of the map than what we would originally have had if, we did, if I did not take this position up. Okay, and you can just keep on moving. You would, in order to have shots on the Super Kong, you would have had to move up pretty dang far up in there, and you would be getting shot possibly from their TDs that are camping in the back. They cannot hit you here. You are hold down. I even have shots on the T57 Heavy that thinks that he's safe on the even further back side of that hill behind the Super Kong. So that is why I like this. And you can see that my team has already just got enough in there pushed up pretty dang far and we have more or less won this side now once you win this location win this side congratulations i can't really tell you guys what to do from there on because every game is different what's happening in my game is not going to be what's going to be happening in your game most likely so you're going to have to use your own brains and adapt to your own situations after this situation or this spot has run its course and run its usefulness so if you do have people that are pushing you on the right side from locations F7, from like the little ravine area, the little river that you do go under the bridge, uh, if their enemies there, you're going to be an easy shot for them. You will have shots on them, but you're going to be a nice, easy shot. So if that happens, you're either going to want to pull a hard right and get as low as possible, or just start directly backing up. If you reverse enough, there will be cover. The, the ground terrains will eventually cover your tank and you'll be able to okay, but there's a lot of ground to travel if that happens. So I just want that to be known. This spot is not 100%, but if that does happen, now you have something else that can help you out of it. So 
that's that's pretty much it i showed you the spot that i would like for you guys to try it out give it a try and from this point on i've read my own map all of my enemies are going to be to the south or to the west so that's the direction i'm heading in i'm cutting through the middle because i have plenty of hp and i can duck down into the river if needed to be and yeah if you if your games need you to fall back and defend base then you can if your if your team is already pushed up there you can keep traveling to the to the south you know it just depends on what's happening in your game but the main thing i want you guys to get take out of this is that if you spawn in the north side on redshire go try this left side rock location out okay you got some armor and some speed you can make it work really really well and it'll most likely help you win your side uh while giving you a bunch of damage i mean i'm already up to 5k damage you guys and i've si i've only taken one hit of damage from that machine in the very beginning of the game no one penned me while i was up there and god already wasn't looking at me which is why I was able to have such a great outcome here. If Artie had been focusing on me, I may have had to leave that spot and come back to it later when he wasn't focusing me, or just kept going back and forth and hoping that he misses me. Uh, but either way, those are the outliers that you guys have to be looking out for that might be happening in your game that didn't happen in mine, and you're just gonna have to adapt to it. Um, the reason I made these videos, and I have a couple more lined up, is that uh, too often I see newer players or just players in general who just don't really know where to go in the beginning of a game and Putting yourself into a strong position or at least knowing where to go in the beginning of a game will Pretty much decide whether you live or die or have a good outcome or affect the game or don't affect the game Putting myself into this location I can say for a fact really helped push this side forward and once you push this side, you can start flanking the, t the enemies on the other side. Obviously, I know that this spot won't work for every single tank in the game. And obviously, I know that there are plenty of other map locations that you can go to from the same spawn. But for people who like to go to the left and duke it out with all the heavies and stuff, the left side of the map is more heavy oriented. So these are for the people who find themselves frequenting the left side of the map. Try the position out. Maybe I'll show you guys some positions on the right side of the map that I like to take, but that's mainly in my mediums and lights. So it just depends what what map I land on and what tank I'm in. Uh, that's what's going to pretty much decide what other maps and what other positions you guys are going to see. Because I'm not going to go out of my way and go to every single map with all these different tanks and show you all the positions I like. That would just take forever, honestly. So you're sort of at the mercy of map rotation and tank RNG that I'm in at the time. The reason why I'm not just going into a private match with my buddies and just showing you these locations is because when I'm playing a private match, it's one versus, you know, maybe one of my friends who, who on the enemy team. You don't get the pub match feel of a public lobby where it's 15v15. You have to work with your teammates and you got to work against the enemies. That is the kind of things that you don't get in a private lobby. The reason I don't want to use footage from a private lobby is because there is so much more that happens in a public lobby, so much more unknowns that happen, and the more unknowns I can show off for you guys in public lobbies, the better off you're going to be while using the locations. In my gameplay, I want to show you the struggles I may face while using the location. This will, one, better help you guys deal with those struggles if you happen to run into a similar situation while using that location. And two, I know that the locations that I show off won't work 100% of the time, but at least me showing you them working once will be good enough for you guys to give it a try. Alrighty, you guys. I hope that this video was informative for you guys. I hope that you enjoyed watching it. And if you did, go and ammo rack the like and subscribe button. Go drop a comment. What locations you like using on this map. And I will talk to you guys in the next one. Ah, uh, bye-bye.